Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Vada Stiblers. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. This episode is brought to you by Rebecca Zanetti's newest installment in her Deep Op series, Driven. This book is published by Kensington. Um, it was out in January, so you can go ahead and get it. So Driven is the fourth book in Zanetti's heart-pumping romantic suspense series featuring operatives in a secret homeland defense department. All the other Deep Ops releases, Hidden, Taken, and Fallen, were USA Today bestsellers. Angus Force is determined to hunt down the serial killer he once shot dead, or so he thought. But an anonymous source reports that Lassiter is alive. Force hasn't slept since, knowing it's only a matter of time before the surgeon strikes again. And soon a body is found bearing Lassiter's same maniacal M.O. It's just the beginning of a murderous trailblazing through D.C. and Virginia, right to Force's backyard. Nari Zhang is the shrink for the ragtag deep ops unit, though she isn't Force's shrink, which is a very good thing. Because once they're thrown together on the case, their attraction is explosive and irresistible. They'll just have to fight that much harder to keep the heat between them from flaming out of control. But things are about to become far more challenging and deadly than they could ever imagine. So if you guys like a, a sexy version of Silence of the Lambs, if you ever wanted you know, Jack and Clarice to get it together, this sounds like it. Um, so serial killers and hot ass. What else could you more want? So if you love Silence of the Lambs with a sexy twist, I would suggest Rebecca Zanetti's Driven. You can get it wherever you buy your books. On this episode, we read Janet Ivanovich's Love Overboard, um, which is a rebranding of a book called Ivan Takes a Wife. Um, it's very fluffy. It's very fun, capery. Um, it does include g g ghosts And g g g ghouls And a corpse in a closet. There's fish eyes. Yeah, there's fish eyes in a soup. Yeah. And I, I like accidental ones, not like that's that's like an appropriate thing to be in that soup. There's also possible like shoddy galley galley ship on a on a wooden boat, but that's for another time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really not sure what OSHA thinks about any of this or the uh, Maine Department of whoever like oversees food and welfare in Maine. <laughs> um, there's a really elaborate neighborhood association plot. Yeah, like way deep and way intrusive. There's um, a home remodeling that doesn't go well. Yeah, so before we get into that, um, what are you drinking? Uh, well, my birthday is in two days, so birthday. I'm drinking Kirk- birthday, uh, Kirkland brand Prosecco. Oh, $6, nice. motherfuckers. That's nice. I'm drinking this leftover because I'm still Courtney No Fun. Um, but I bought this... It's, it, it doesn't even have, like, a name. I think it's called Our Love. I got it because it's got the conversation hearts on it. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon, so it's, like, a leftover wine that I had from Valentine's. And it's pretty good. It's just a, you know, light Cabernet. Um, but it fits our whole, you know, February love theme. Okay, so are you are you reading and or listening to or watching anything anything fun right now? I am. I'm actually reading The Dragon and the Pearl, which is the second in that Jenny Lynn series. Oh, I got to get to that. Lee Tao was so Girl. hot, y'all. It's so good. So this book, and I'm not doing you know, it without giving a lot away, it's about Lee Tao and the, the, the concubine from that you met in the first one. And it's really good because I feel like Jenny Lynn has a lot more confidence in this book. And the characters are so much more kind of, I mean, they're grown. You know, where I, Lee was like 19, um, our, our main characters in this are in their 30s and like late, late 20s. It does crack me up because she's like, I'm looking at the autumn of my life. And I'm like, bitch, you are 29. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's really- Well, shit, I guess, I guess it's New Year's Day up in oh here. Oh, my God. But it's really good because it kind of goes into both of their backstories. And I do. I feel like it's, you could tell she had a lot of fun and she really connected with these characters. And, like, if you thought Lee Tao was hot before, like, Lee Tao is, he's, he's my book boyfriend now. Like, he is hardcore book boyfriend i love it and i would suggest you guys get that jenny lynn series because they're really good fun books she also follows us on twitter now she does so i know that was really exciting for me i know i really i'm really (laughs) enjoying her writing and i'm really enjoying this book a lot 
Uh, yeah, I um, I've been so like slammed for everything that the only thing that I've read, I read like we're doing the Thornbird soon, and I read that bad boy in what was it even three days? I know, I'm very proud of you, like because you know, dude, think, it was a goer. It was a <laughs> well, you know, I think you needed a book to get your book mojo back. So hopefully, yeah, I think so. I've had a very hard time concentrating on stuff lately. It's like we're back, we come full circle to the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. So oh. I've had a really hard time concentrating. And I did go, I guess this isn't, you know, it's not a book related thing, but I did go and volunteer here in South Carolina. I don't know about other states. You'd have to look it up. In South Carolina, they have a program with Prisma Health where they're doing a big drive through vaccination. And if you volunteer and help and just do one of the shifts, at the end of the shift, you get your vaccine. So I got my first dose and it, it was wild. So, you know, I was there from about seven a, you know, like I was there like really early, like around seven to like 1230 or maybe 630, something like that. And then they just send you off to these tents and there's these, you know, national, like it, you feel like you're in a movie because it's all these tents set up and there's just National Guard people standing there. And like, all you do is like, you just stand up and they just like, you know, put the shot in you. Um, but it was cool. It felt like everybody that came through the line seemed ex- it was it was a nice you know how like sometimes you just need nice moments of humanity <laughs> everybody <laughs> just seemed happy and was like oh my gosh thank you so much for volunteering and you know you could tell people were really excited to get their shots like there were a couple people that were like this line's really long <laughs> but you know <laughs> like honey i would wait all day for you to put it in my eyeballs yeah, I'm also uh, volunteering. I, on my birthday, I had to get there at 7 o'clock in the morning, and it's probably going to be freezing outside. But, um, yeah, we talk about being old, but we are so far from being in any group that's ever going to get this vaccine that this is, like, the only way to do it. We had to, like, sell our bodies. Um, and I'm afraid I'm going to cry when they give me the shot. You know, it's been, I mean, it's been almost a year, almost exactly. March 13th is when my watch stopped. So <laughs> I think what's funny about it, what is interesting is once you get that first shot, I think it's like being rich because once you get it, all of a sudden you just get an email that's like pop, that pops up. It's like, oh, you need to come back and get your second one on this day. Like, it's so easy. You know, mm. like once you're in, you're in. Um, it's just getting in <laughs> that takes forever. So, like, I get my second one on March 9th and then, you know, um, licking yeah. doorknobs all day, every day. But it's, you know, it was. I would suggest, like, if you're, you know, like, not averse to doing that, see if, like, a place in your community has it. Because the other thing is just seeing how, like, you know, these people are just, they're literally, like, the people working are, you know, literally giving thousands of vaccinations a day. So any way that you can help out is always a nice thing, too. So Yeah, I mean, I want to help. It's not that I don't, like, you know, want to contribute to the cause of mankind. It's just that (laughs) I also want this shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, you know, it's a great, it's a win-win. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a fun week, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we had, we've had amazingly crappy weather here, but I, yeah. I feel like I can't complain about our crappy weather. Uh, it was, it was cold. I will say that it was cold, but. And um, it rained and it rained and it rained and I was bitching about it to my friend in Texas. Oh, Sorry. No. Eh, well, <laughs> he knows. <laughs> That's very on brand for Sarah. <laughs> like, you know. like, oh, you look, got problems. Let me tell you about problems. Look, so. comedy is like, well, no, tragedy is when I get a paper cut, and uh, comedy is when you fall into a manhole cover and die. <laughs> no, it's backwards. Crap. I just completely blew that. Uh, I apologize. You should Google the, the actual quote. <laughs> that's also on brand for Sarah. Oh. Just blow it. Yeah, just. <laughs> so we are reading it's this is our first um janet ivanovich book and janet is from new jersey and she had oh did she i couldn't tell no. has she ever talked about new jersey before no so, okay so she had children she was chose to become a housewife and in her 30s she began writing novels um to learn the right the art of writing dialogue ivanovich took as to, she took lessons in, in improv acting, and she does do really good dialogue. For yeah, 10 she years, does. she attempted to write the great American novel, finishing three manuscripts that she was unable to sell. After someone suggested she tried romance novels, she read several romances and in, discovered she enjoyed the genre. She wrote two and submitted them for publishing. Still unable to find a publisher, she stopped writing and signed with a, like a temp agency, and then several months after, she um, received to, you know she received an offer 
um, for two thousand dollars, which she considered an astounding sum. So Jana Devonovich, you know, she has, you know, she Jana Devonovich writes romance novels under the name Jana Devonovich, but she also writes. Um, She's got a, the, her mystery novels, which Sarah has read, and well, she does those under yeah, that's under her name, yeah, yeah. But she used to use the the pen name Steffi Hall, um, but yeah, so she writes romance, and then she writes the mystery Stephanie Plum. Well, and the Stephanie Plum thing, I mean, I guess they're now not technically romance because they are a long series about one person, and so the happy yeah. for now is really stretching it, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, they are though; they're totally romance novels. Like the, she's always got one, like kind of at the end of the book. And I read these long after you should stop. Stop at like eight. <laughs> My mom and I were reading them, and yeah. like come fourteen, I was just I I was just disgusted, like utterly disgusted with this book. Like, why am I still reading this? But I kind of felt like I had to finish it. And that's the last one I read. So stop at eight. And she's yeah. still writing them. I mean, I don't even know. Morelli and Ranger, has she picked one yet? I mean. <laughs> so she has over, yeah, she has over 200 million books in print worldwide. And her books have been translated in over 40 languages. So she is a juggernaut. Um, and I have read a bunch of her romance novels. I haven't read the Stephanie's Long books, but I've read several of her romance novels and she usually does, like, her usual kind of thing is very kind of K-drama. Like, you know, it's always, like, a plucky girl that's always in awkward situations and usually a complete bastard of a of a hero. Um, so, But this one was a little bit different. So, yeah. Well, she... in the Stephanie Plum books, there's two dudes, okay? It's, like, this love triangle that never walking out. And one of them is, like, kind of the mysterious... Like, literally tall, dark, and handsome. Um, like, you know, he, I believe he's Hispanic. I, it's been a while since I've read them. But um, And then there's um, and then there's Joe, who's like, you know, Mr. All-American Italian guy that she grew up with. But they all kind of, uh, it's all a little infantilizing. Like, okay, she is a danger to herself and others. But, like, they do kind of talk down to her <laughs> a, yeah. a lot. And so I guess it's kind of something a little, a little similar. But it's all like the will they or won't they. Like, they, yeah. she keeps that up for way 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 too long um but so, so, and they all have this very on. i'm sorry yeah i was just gonna go back into her romance a little bit before we get like <laughs> too tangenty because <laughs> i have some more about her um oh yeah so her novel that her first novel was hero at large it was published in 1987 and it was in the second chance love category under the and that was under steffi hall the following year she began writing for bantam love swept under her own name for the next five years, she continued to write category romances for Love Swept. Her work within the romance novel genre helped her to learn to create likable characters and attractive leading men. Um, she believes, like, and again, what happens is, like, after her 12th one, she realized that she was more interesting in writing action sequence sequences than sex scenes. And her editors didn't really care. <laughs> so she took the next 18 months to formulate the plan that she wanted. And that's where the Stephanie Plum books came from. So she started with romance, and then she was actually inspired by Robert De Niro's um, Midnight Run. Like, that's <laughs> what inspired it, which is a great movie uh, with Charles Grodin. But, yeah, so didn't mean to cut you off, but just to kind of get into the romance before. No, no, I mean, I, it's just funny that, like, um, and I understand that, like, the, the, the Stephanie Plum books, I guess, do kind of straddle the category a lot, but I would call them romantic suspense. Yeah. You know? Like, certainly, like, okay, they reminded me very much of, if y'all read um, Laurel K. Hamilton's Anita Blake books, mm -hmm. um, where there's sort of this permanent love triangle. And, you know, by the end of one book, she'll be kind of with the one guy. And by the end of another book, she might be kind of with the other guy. Yeah. But, like, it, it's ongoing. You're you're pretty sure it's not going to change anytime soon. I mean, Stephanie Plum is a little bit more f formulaic than Laurel K. Hamilton. But I, I read them all at least a couple of books <laughs> too far. I um, a you know, little before. bit of a... I have a like I don't like a really long like romance series like that like like the like the Sookie Stackhouse books I was like just yeah I don't they like there has to be a finite amount of like picking right. somebody you know like I agree so I'm not those I, I tend to like for me I just get a little frustrated with that kind of like that like, you can do that for four books you know yeah but, like book exactly 15, I think a trilogy is fine but like after that <laughs> oh, like you know it's been 10 years like come on you know like you're 35 now like, you know or whatever like yeah I don't think you should have to be you know limited by the very strict romance rule that you right. know 
the, like you know because what you would call a traditional romance series couple one is book one couple two is book two yeah. right and you might like go to their house but the you know couple one has nailed it they're yeah. done they have their happily ever after right you know whereas a series is happily for now over and over and over again yeah I, I, I certainly think that that's romance also but that yeah you do run the risk of that getting it gets old so it gets um... old Okay, so the book I've got, well, Sarah will tell you about the original cover in a minute, because the original cover is amazing. I've got the reissue, and the reissue is, I mean, it's perfect for February, because it's very frothy, it's very pink, you know. Oh, what's the date on the reissue? 2005, I believe, because I looked at it, because I was like, what is this? Yeah, 2005. Um, You know, it's got the script letters of love overboard and a wave with hearts on it, and then the 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 inside cover says originally published as Ivan takes a wife dear reader in a previous life in a previous life before the time of plum I wrote 12 short romance novels red hot screwball comedies each and every one of them nine of these stories were originally published by the love swept line between the years 1988 and 1992 all of them went out of print immediately they could be only found at used bookstores and yard sales I'm excited to tell you that those nine stories are now being re-released by Harper Collins Love Overboard is the second in the lineup. It's presented here almost in its original form. I've only done some minor editing <laughs> to correct some embarrassing bloopers I missed the first time around, and I changed the title because I thought the original title, Ivan Takes a Wife, was boring. Whatever. Really? Because I, I thought that Ivan Takes a Wife is much more intriguing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Love Overboard is a romantic tale about a handsome ship's captain, a wary wench from Jersey City, a hundred-year-old two-masted schooner, an entire town of shoemakers... <laughs> There's some getting naked, some blueberry pie, and more getting naked, and at the end, okay, I won't tell you at the end, but it's really good and it'll make you feel happy. I took my family on the road trip from Heck to research this book. When we finally got to Maine, it was all worthwhile because we fell in love with the boats, the people, or the boats and the people who sailed them. That's very sweet. All right, so Sarah's got the fun cover. Yeah, I do, and uh, I don't think that Courtney, well, neither of us knew, I think, when I got this, that it had to do with Maine schooners. (laughs) <laughs> and that's my personal oh, <laughs> so i apologize in advance no what's really funny so this is august of 1989 this is love swept 343 and yeah ivan takes a wife is kind of like a, an intriguing title it's like oh you giving away it's spoiler alert you know yeah um but the cover is amazing it's like arthur morgan from uh, red dead redemption 2 for my gamer friends and he's like macking on demi moore and she's wearing like a nightgown and he's wearing like still in his belt <laughs> And it's got one of those like great love swept um covers. It's got sort of like the the um you know the color surround, uh, which is purple on this, and it's great. Um and actually I, I do have the original uh back cover art uh, back cover copy, I think. <laughs> I have a description, which is great, and I'm gonna read it. Simply handsome schooner captain Ivan Remison deserved to be called Ivan the Terrible, Stephanie Lowe decided. First he'd sold her a haunted house, and now he was laughing at her calamity Jane cooking. She only agreed to work one voyage of his main coastal cruise in exchange for the house repairs promised by her cousin, who'd run off to marry a plumber. When the brazen Ivan, descendant of a pirate, swept her into his arms during a moonlight rendezvous, Stephanie knew how it felt to be pirate's treasure. Iron teased her, flirted with her, and made her feel cherished as no one ever had. But when would her sexy scoundrel deliver the ravishing he promised? Ivan had expected a shipboard romance, a fling on the ocean, that ended at the dock, but every time he kissed Stephanie, he thought of marriage, hearth, and home. Could he seduce his lady love with the sweet mysteries of passion and put her private ghost to rest? <laughs> that, that actually does a lot of the heavy lifting for the plot for us. Yeah, it does. We, yeah, we. All right, on to questions. No, um, <laughs> no, it's yeah. This it's a. It was a delightful little book. So. The book starts off with, again, Ivan has, and Sarah, you know what, I'm going to let Sarah do the, the plot because it's just going to be like the meanderings of talking about <laughs> sea shanties and Sarah <laughs> basically going Ahab on us for like, this should be a 45 minute episode, but it's going to be three and a half hours because Sarah's going to go There on are her. no shanties in the book. <laughs> no, I, I, I guess I did the same thing that um, that Janet Ivanovich did. Although I'm nowhere near as in love with the name Stephanie as, as she is. What is with that? Anyway, um, like that her her pseudonym and this book's like heroine and also like how, what are we on twenty four of the Stephanie Plum books? Yeah. 
Maybe like. it's the name that she always puts her mom and giving her. I don't know. Yeah, I went on um, years ago and how a, um, a, a learn how to sail a traditionally rigged schooner wooden boat school um, cruise. So we did not get the fun. Somebody else does all the work for us. We got the, you know, learn to reef and rail and before the mast and all that. So I have been on one of these ships and thoroughly enjoyed myself after <laughs> after I got off <laughs> because well, it was really hard work well, when I was on the ship. Okay. I have very fond memories. So the book starts off with like Avin. Avin is a, a schooner captain and he is waiting for his cook. He's got this woman that comes and cooks for him. You know, whenever he does, he does these cruises to go look at the autumn leaves on the schooner. And it's mainly old people. We'll get into that in a second. But his, this woman, Lucy, is the woman who comes and cooks for him. And he's waiting for her and he's like, you know, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. And then he sees this wild woman come like just barreling down a hill. She gets like, she tumbles down and is cussing the entire like ass over legs just falling down the hill to the harbor um, and he's like i'm gonna fuck that <laughs> and this like from the jump he is like in to win that yeah. from the jump <laughs> and you know it's our it's our main character um stephanie and stephanie is there her cousin lucy is she is going to elope with a plumber um and you find out that stephanie has left jersey city and she has bought ivan's old family home it's i feel like it's like i mean it's big more than a home it's like an estate but you know um he's been in the family for hundreds of years he's she has bought the home and she's going to turn it into a bed and breakfast but the house has been a disaster like one thing after another has just fallen apart so she is going to come cook on this ship for a week in exchange, you know, for Lucy to get married. And then the plumber husband is going to fix um, Stephanie's bathroom. No, just the toilet. Just the toilet. I mean, <laughs> I have fixed a toilet, y'all. All right. so, <laughs> a whole new toilet is like $200. But, but here's the thing. Like, Stephanie has never, you, you know, Stephanie has kind of a mysterious past at the beginning. Stephanie has never cooked really at all let alone for like 20 something old people on a schooner so you know it becomes very farcical um you know she, she gets- assumes that there's going to be which i mean is i guess a reasonable assumption if you've never been on one of these like little tiny boats i guess you would think like it is in many many places including like your local fucking applebee's that everything comes frozen and you chuck it in <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but that's not the case yeah <sighs> these have like little wood stoves and yeah, yeah. And let me just tell you, she did not master a wood stove in three days. Like No, no, I, she absolutely did not. I know. Ladies, I have no idea how to cook on a wood stove. My like in my former life, again, I worked at a historic site. We had a group of women that did historic cooking. And now they didn't do a wood stove. Like, but you know, they had all the stuff. Like they were a guild. Like you had to apprentice to get into them. You know, it took them years to learn how to do this. Not like it took bitch three days to like learn how to make a turkey dinner on the wood stove. Um, yeah, I, I've seen like all those like uh, oh you know like manor house and colonial yeah. house and all that, and the cooking is always fucking garbage because they have no one. Yeah. And they always go to like and and they teach them how to do it, but it is a, absolutely a skill that like people in the past learned how to do. Yeah. For, since they were children by like instinct and you just have to know like how hot something is by how long you can hold your hand on it and stuff again, not, yeah you don't learn that in three days i had it like I, again every week i had a historic cooking guild and they would be like come down here be like no I, i'm good i don't need to learn how to use the dutch oven i'm fine <laughs> you know like um so it's very cute she's very she's very fun um you know she's trying her best the first it's her it's ivan our, our captain who has descended from a pirate and then fuck boy ace who is like <laughs> helping on the ship and he's kind of like her partner in crime and then a bunch of old slightly people. nerdy well but a, a good a sweet kid right yeah and then a bunch of old people and you know like the first the first day she's making fish stew and like she just throws the fish heads in there and there's like fish eyes floating around um, she counts them but she misses one yeah you know and she's trying her best and it's very it's a very stephanie ivana or janet ivanovich book where like our heroine tries her best but then like there's always like disasters um, but just like in a funny way it's yeah. not in like this demeaning way i mean like people are making fun of her for it, but not in a way that's i mean like you deserve have a little fun of you made if you serve up a fish eye to a paying customer yeah <laughs> you um, know 
it's gentle and, and yeah funny. her and Ivan are, are flirting with each other and then the, the these the some of the passengers again these old people in this fucking scooter that you find out doesn't have a shower I'm like no old person is paying to be on this boat for a week and not take a shower like I refuse um, and I mean, I know this is like later, uh, like, cause I, I, I was on the show. I'm trying not to be like when I was on a boat, but when I was on a boat and it was like 2005, I want to say. And okay. So there's two heads on this boat. So it's like a tiny little cube with a turlet in it. But one of those tiny little cubes with a turlet in it also had like a little waterproof curtain to put your clothes behind. And then on the ceiling That's of the cube. Think. Like, I would think it'd be very similar to like a camper yeah. shower situation. Yeah. I mean, it was not elaborate. And I think I only took like of, of the week that I was there, I, I took a shower like halfway through and then I took a shower before I knew I was gonna have to get out on an airplane See, but you're young like that okay well we'll get into that later I know I'm, I'm digressing <laughs> but so you know she's covered in blueberry she's covered in stuff she's always in sweatpants she's just it, you know Ivan is beguiled with her so while they're kind of flirting one of the passengers swears that there is a ghost on board she says that she keeps seeing this woman with blue green hair and a knife and you know other passengers see her too and then you find out like as of this mystery is unraveling that stephanie who has a very young face she used to be a jersey city narc like she was 21 jump street and there's actually a 21 jump street you know reference which i appreciate and she'd had a really <laughs> bad and you find out later what happened she'd had a really bad experience and kind of reassessed because you know when you're a when you're 21 jump street and you're not Johnny Depp. I mean, even Johnny Depp got tired of it and they had to get Richard Grieco. You know, <laughs> like you eventually want to grow. She's growing out of it. Yeah. And she also had a very bad, like she got made yeah. and almost died and, you know, got thrown into the Hudson River, which, um, well, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's why you see ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. You take a swim I... in the Hudson, you're going to see all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even, I don't, I don't even think um, Costanza or Kramer swam in the Hudson. I think he swam in the East River. You know. Um, <laughs> well, my grandfather, when he was young, swam in both the Allegheny and the Monongahela, like Ooh. all the time. So that's, I think, why he lived to be ninety some. Yeah. <laughs> because you know, that kills you right then, <laughs> or you get superpowers. So, um, you know, she gets thrown into the Hudson. She decides that she's like, yeah, she's gonna. She just can't be a cop anymore. You know, like she's been seventeen for ten years. It's time to move on. Um, and that's why she bought the house. So, she- well, but then you also find out, um, which adds a little, like, because I would have first thought stir away immediately, except that you find out that there's this whole thing about the ghost. Was it Agnes? Is that her name? No, Tess. Agatha. Tess. Tess. Uh, there, there's a there's a ghost in the house yes. that she has bought from him and also he's like what what do you mean things wrong with the house like i left it in perfect condition what the fuck do you mean it's falling apart yeah like no it's falling apart so you're like oh oh so this might be a, it, it's a kind of silly romance story that might be a g- 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 ghost story yeah g- 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 ghost so they you know the the they're still on the they're still on the schooner we're still schoonering and other people are seeing this you know go this ghostly apparition lady and finally i was like okay you know, and then you know it's like it is stephanie's cops instincts take you know hold and she's like tracking it down and she finds this stowaway and her name is melody and she's you know hooking up with ace ace brought her on board um you know she's punk rock girl and now i've got that song in my head but she's punk rock girl <laughs> and she's like she ends up like you know they bring her on board Ivan gives Ace a talking to and she ends up just helping, you know, Stephanie with the cooking. And, and she- of course, Stephanie, having spent all this time with these kids, is really worried about her. And I mean, like, she's not yeah. actually, like, she doesn't even pretend to be a teenager. I, she, I guess, can prove it with ID. And, like, you know, yeah. but she's she's in a band. It's all, it's like that, but it's not like an endangered minor. No, and, but no. Stephanie still feels very responsible <laughs> because I guess this girl has a really young face, you know. She's very quirky, you know, like, they get along really well. So, you know, again, they're still they're still schoonering. There's flirtations. Stephanie gets pushed, well. There's this whole thing, quote unquote, okay, where like Stephanie, <laughs> yeah, with the shower thing, and he's like, oh well, uh, yeah, there's no shower, and she's like, there's no fucking what, and he's like, yeah, you'll have to take a swim in the Penobscot Bay, where I will not fucking swim because and this has like, got to be 86 goddamn it's degrees. Be like, I mean, it's got to be late September, October, and like, fuck that shit. Like, 
<laughs> Fuck that. All that shit. Because I was there in June. And these people kept jumping in. They're like, really warm, Sarah. And this place is all up to 57. I'm like, Girl, y'all have fucking fun. You, again, my family is like, you know, my cousin's side of the family is from, you know, they're from upstate New York. And half of my brothers and sisters in law, like my one, my one sister in law, she comes down to the south to go to the beach. You know, it makes sense. The other one's like my, my one sister in law. Her mother was on the show, did the reading. You heard her main accent. So my sister-in-law, April's from Maine. So they go to Maine multiple times a year. Makes sense. My other, like, you know, my other brother, Dan, is always going to the, he's like, we're going to Maine. We're going to the beach. I'm like, you're not going to the beach. You're going to. No. You're going to. The shore. You're You're going to where the land meets the water. Yeah. Like, you're not. (laughs) They ain't got a beach. Stop calling it the beach. Y'all aren't getting in the water there. The coldest I have ever, well, there's, there's two cold bodies of water i've been in one was uh the north sea and then the other one was we went to lake george a couple of summers ago and it was june it was june in lake george and lake george is kind of like it's a real touristy area and it's about an hour north of albany and we you know we have these really cute cabins on the lake and i got into lake george and wanted to die like <laughs> it was, you know, it was one of those where it's like, oh, it's a balmy sixty-five in here, you know, like so. This you bitch, would not have got my ass anywhere. I, I'll put my feet in it, this, okay? This, I'll like dangle my feet over the dock, but I will not get in it. So this bitch constantly is getting knocked into like main waters, and it's like, <laughs> you know, it. I will say, like, there are there are a couple good like moments and very kind of with it moments in this book, and I guess I should save these for questions where you like. She gets knocked into the water and he's like, hey, and she's like, it's fucking cold. And then, you know, like, so I like when there's reasonable, like, I do not feel sexy right now moments. Um, (laughs) So they keep having flirtations. And basically she like you find out that Stephanie has not had sex. Um, You know, again, she's been 17 for the past 10 years. And, you know, she's not 17. And the only people she's been around are 17 years old. So she's not having sex. So she kind of like she propositions him and he's like, I really care about you. I want to wait. <laughs> and it's very sweet, um, you know, but she takes it the wrong way and is miffed. So but the, the both of them kept on. They keep like kind of making this situation you know, yeah. uh, could come to being like they just kind of keep on ending up like uh, like whoop, just fell up against you again. Yeah. Like, so they're they're both they're both DTF. All right. Like, but like, she's just not really sure about it. And he doesn't want to. It's it's all very sweet, yeah. but I mean, you shouldn't be handsing on somebody in their itsy bitsy tiny scooter cabin if you're not like. If... But I think he was also like, I don't want your first time to be in a schooner cabin with like a thousand people around. Um, yeah, you had to be real quiet. So they get back. They get back home, and she finds out Melody or not Melody, um, Lucy and the plumber had a fight. And so now she's out of plumber. She's out of plumber. She was like, I did all this for nothing, you know. And Well, she shouldn't be paid for her work on that shit, let's just say. I don't know. Again, day one, she had fish eyes in a stew. And day three, she's making an entire Thanksgiving feast with a wood stove. Um, Well, they're all dying of fucking salmonella (laughs) anyway, then, because there's no way that that turkey was done all the way through and not burned. And fucking Melody over there is making creatively shaped croissants. No, I'm sorry. It was crescent rolls. It wasn't croissants. Because I I had to go back. I was like, okay, tell me they didn't make croissants from scratch. Because, like, I will take any kind of bullshit in this. (laughs) But I bake, like, whoa. And I make a ton of bread. I do not make croissants. That galley also. The other my other galley issue, my other galley issue is that she has all this stuff to make the turkey dinner. And like when she's like, Well, where's the refrigerator? He's like, I've got an ice box upstairs. I was like, You're gonna have to give me more detail because like you keeping like a whole ass turkey in there. What what do you got in this ice box? But right. Um, so they get back and you find out that Ivan, like, I mean, again, he just wants to be around Stephanie, so they get they get back to Haven is the name of the house, and you know she's got all these things that need to be done. Lucy and Melody are living with her, and then Ivan is like, "I will rent a room basically for the entire duration of fa- the rest of fall and winter, and I'll help you repair everything." And you know, so it's this really cute like little foursome, you know, like Melody and Lucy, and then her and Ivan, and her and Ivan continue flirting around each other. 
Um, it's real sweet because it's the off season, and so you know you can kind of feel the sense of re- kind of relief that like all the out of towners leave, and it's like just it's the real mainers so, there. Yeah. And, but they get yeah. like they get a they get one set of guests that are like they come for their leaf peep and a week too late. And, you know, she gives these funny rules. Like, she tells Melody, she's like, your hair has to be all one color. So Melody just dyes it bright orange. Um, <laughs> Which I don't know how she didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, she's like, well, I guess I said one color. And, you know, they're, it's really, like, the old couple are, you know, they're bickering. They're like, well, there's no leaves. There's nothing to do. And Melody keeps talking about how she's having conversations with Tess, the ghost on the widow's walk of the home. <laughs> And she's also like, talking about like she's got all those these like meat eating horror stories. Yeah. He's like you know extremely nitrate, large nitrates, yes. and then um, <laughs> you know she says that the ghost likes cookies, and so the the the, the lady saying um, is obsessed with ghosts. So she goes to the, like the widow's walk for seven hours and waits and can't you know doesn't see the ghost. But, and all the townies like stand around to watch this because like, it's just you know while they're in the house like so. <sighs> Stephanie's talking about like in one of the rooms, like the the closet in her room, she can't open the door that it's locked. And Ivan's like, well, there's a skeleton key upstairs. Let's go get it. They open the door and a dead body falls out. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? I thought I, I knew like, where this book was Courtney? going. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like Courtney. <laughs> there's a dead body. This dead body falls out. And like he's been embalmed. And they're like, what the fuck? So they like run to so the- So it's not like a murdered guy. It's like a guy in a suit and a, a boutonniere and, a, you know, yeah. yeah like- <laughs> he looks very much like those, like, I always, like, yeah. It, it looks like the, like the ventriloquist dummy kind of. Is yeah. It, so she freaks out and goes and throws up and he's like, I thought you were a cop. And she's like, no, yeah. no, she throws up on the body. <laughs> yeah. No, she, Which is very, uh, no, very no, generous. She, she made it to the bathroom. She did make it to the bathroom because they leave the room. And he's like, I thought you were a, a narcotics cop. And she's like, or I thought you were a cop. And she's like, yeah, narcotics. I never saw a dead body. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, but when they get back to the room, the body is gone. And so they search the house and they don't see anything. Lucy and Melody were downstairs the whole time. So it can't be one of them, you know. But she doesn't want to call the cops because, and I mean, I kind of get yeah. this. You're trying to get a fucking hotel off the ground. <laughs> yeah, back to us. And then... You know, it, and it wasn't a murder victim. It was just like a dead body. Had a hallucination. He'd already uh, he'd uh, already been embalmed. You know that's what they kept talking about. So, which is weird. Like, how can you tell? Like, was it like with the lips stitched shut? I mean, I, this body I, keeps flying around this uh, this <laughs> this bed and breakfast. Like, it busts through the windows one night. Yes. It scares the like it it visits the lady who wanted to see the ghost. This body is just being flung around this place. And they know, like, they know that, like, that this is not a, a ghost. It's somebody, like, somebody is basically just swinging a dead body around. And <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we're going to figure it out, you know. Um, Maybe that's the prefer- proverbial oh, cat. Like, oh. if you can't swing a cat, you know. Yeah, so the other one that got me was, like, so she's in bed. She's wearing one of those insane like uh, she's wearing a, a sarah mcbride special nightgown like she is not she, minor flannel she's got on one of those like you know up to the neck frilly nightgowns that i just don't know how y'all sleep in that like i'm t-shirt no pa- like i get like i'm a hot sleeper i like reading about these nightgowns it makes me claustrophobic <laughs> so she's got she's got a mcbride special on she's laying there and the dead body comes literally swinging through her like <laughs> French doors, and she's like, "Yeah," <laughs> and then it of course disappears. Ivan comes in, he's like, "I don't want you in here. You'll have to come to my room tonight." And then he's like, <laughs> he, "Then he does this. He's like, I can help you unwind." And she's like, "Motherfucker, a, a dead <laughs> body just swung through here. Why do you think I want to have sex now?" But then he used his Ivan powers, and you know they finally do it. Janet Ivanovich does not give you detail. Like, she gives you... No. Yeah. She gives you the idea, though. It's like a sexy idea. Yeah, so... But it's not... I mean, like, the, like some of these people do a really bad bad job at the mm. not details. Yeah. She does. Oh, I should say, at this point, by the way, that consistently, throughout the book, this woman refers to her genitals as her doodah. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, her doodah. Um, it was singing a song at one point. 
I just mean, singing a song. I was like, you know what? Like, and this is the biggest thing. She is a narc that's been around teenagers for 10 years. She's picking up teenage terms, and they're not calling it a doodah. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna have to put content warning on it now that you just sung that song. Oh shit, yeah, doodah is okay, but Song of the South yeah. is not okay. Um, <laughs> that's fair. So they they're doing it like once they do it, the dam is broke and they are just doing it all the time. And Melody's like, Can somebody switch rooms with me? Because all I am hearing are these two banging. <laughs> well, no, somebody else says like one of the like the, the guests, because of course now they have a million guests. Yeah, oh yeah. And what they happened was the, yeah. the lady, the 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 first the you know, their first two guests during the off season had like taken it to the news about a de- you know, about a ghost. And so all they had all these ghost hunters there. Um, but yeah, like one of them is like, oh yes, yes, I heard the rapping and the knocking all night long oh, and the moans. Yes. <laughs> and so um you know, they're tired of these like terrible ghost busters there and you know, Melody like they kind of realize something's up with Melody because Melody she's very like she she shifts a little bit. Like they see like that she's is not acting the same way that she was. Like they said like at first we felt like we were the ones being bamboozled, and now that she's tricking these other guests, we're in on it. Like, and we can see it. Like, she's on our side looking out, and then suddenly we yeah. can see, like, this is all. Her big old, like, uh, spiel about the pigs and yeah. all. Like, that's an act, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And so they end up, like, wh- again, the body is swinging around. <laughs> the body gets <laughs> thrown. Like, that body is, like, you know, imagine it, like, on a, like, you know, <laughs> those zip ties where you just swing a lasso over your head that body is flying around like that and they see what well, that happens they're, they're they're on a stakeout and like you find out that's when you find out all the terror like about um stephanie's near death you know somebody holding a gun to her head when she got made and stuff and so they they're watching this this dead body just be like my weekend at Bernie from hell just being (laughs) thrown around. And while that's happening, they see Stephanie coming out of a pickup truck with a crate. Melody. Yeah. Melody. Melody. Um, They see her coming out with a crate. And then all of a sudden the entire end stinks. And, you know, she's like, Oh, it's the ghostly apparition, the sulfur, but it's like, it's bad enough that all these terrible like ghost hunters leave. And he's like, that's a fucking stink bomb. (laughs) And I recognize it because that is the same time that I used to let loose. Yeah, in high school. <laughs> and then, um, so like he, so he like he's obviously made it. He's like figured something out, and yeah. he won't tell her. He just like they had to go and experience it. So they go, they follow her. They follow. They're they're tracking Melody now. They know that she's part of this, and like they're tracking her down, and they follow her to this house, and he, like the entire time. He's, no, 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 no. Um, they go to the factory first. Yeah, well, they're t- yeah, like the entire time he's been talking about because work- he knows that the, that this guy did well, the stink bomb because that's the only person who does the stink bomb. Well, he's been talking about working at a shoe factory, and you're like, what the fuck is the shoe factory? Like, I don't understand the shoe factory. You know, like, and they roll up to the shoe factory, and that's when like you see Melody, and Melody's like, oh shit. And you find out, like, he, he mentions, like, one of his, like, childhood best friends or something that also. He's, like, the manager at the shoe factory. The shoe factory. And fact- so he goes to find out where this guy is. <laughs> this is. The shoe factory. And I feel like everybody's like, where the fuck did the shoe factory come in? I was like, yes, exactly. Where did the shoe factory come in? Because <laughs> yes. you had heard about, like, what, to preface, like, he had talked about, he was like, you know, in the summers, I captained the schooner. He was like, what happened was, basically, my grandfather died, one, like, in like in 1986 my grandfather died in 1987 my gr- father died in 1988 my mom died and his grandfather like he had been left this family home and the schooner and the schooner was basically being left it was like a 200 year old boat is being left to rot in the harbor and so he really wanted to fix it up and so you thought that he had sold the home to fix up the boat and he was like in the summer i drive the boat in the winter time, I work at a shoe factory. I do odds and ends kind of jobs. And you find out, like when they, they have this confrontation with Melody and you think hey, Melody is going to be nefarious. It's Melody. And then Lucy's there too, that this entire little town runs on the shoe factory. And 
Ivan inherited the shoe factory. And when he got the shoe factory, it's kind of like in North and South, you know, like he's trying to make the best of it, but he can't. And like, so he had to sell Haven to basically like pay for to keep all like, so he doesn't have to let anybody go. Well, and he's done this big restructuring, which mm-hmm. will evidently pay eventually. But of course, it's going to have a couple hard years and all this. But yeah, I think like, they end up at this guy's house because he's like he knows that it's his friend from high school who yeah. is like the manager. And then they find all these people surprised that we happen to know. So Melody is the guy's daughter who just graduated from Juilliard and is an actress. And then Lucy, and like basically, they knew like their plan was well. Lucy is cousins, you know, Lucy is um, Stephanie's cousin. And she was like, well, my friend, you know, she knew that somebody was coming to look to buy a place. And, you know, she helped facilitate that. And then everybody fucked up the fucking house that she bought. So, like, they basically were so upset that Ivan sold Haven, the house, that they were like, their plan was like, well, let's make sure he sells sells it to a cute girl, and then we're going to hook them up. And yeah, so, and they have gone to extraordinary insane, lengths. Insane, insane lengths. <laughs> like, you know, and... Like creepy fucking gaslighting lengths. Like, and, and Melody, like, they were like, well, why were you on the ship? And Melody was like, because I didn't trust him. I was going to watch him for you. And then, like... <laughs> It's like they were on their belly sawing through the porch. Yes. But don't worry about it. They got it fixed by friends. Oh like, my God. what? It's, it's wild. What? Like, yeah, the end of this book is insane. Like, you find out a town of 700 people basically gaslit this one woman into thinking that a ghost was destroying her home and made her go cook on a wood stove for a week in a wooden ship with no real bathroom and no shower just so that maybe she'd be on the off chance attracted to this guy's D and that they would end up together and he could move back into the house. It is. And it worked. It is insane. (laughs) Like it is some like. I like to think that there was a shower and he lied. (laughs) Still like this, like that would be over for me. I'd be like, fuck you. If I can't shower, dude, Like, (laughs) um, like this is like some, the village deep, gaslighting insanity and yeah i mean see like no answer to what the fuck was going on would have made sense oh my god but, and, oh, and, but th- oh. this was the answer and then you find out you find out they're like they're like well, what the fuck is the dead body you maniacs <laughs> and they're like oh that's just the dummy that's just the dummy that we got from Mr. Zanetti's um, funeral home. And my question is, okay, why would Mr. Zanetti's funeral home have a dummy that looks like a shittily embalmed guy? Like, why wouldn't they have, like, the best? I don't know. But they were like, it's the same thing that Disney uses. And, like, okay. Okay. I know that she's a narc. I know that she is a narc. But also, bitch would have had some minor, seat, like some minor paramedic training like just to be a cop like you get some like cpr you can't tell like you can't tell it i i don't know i feel like i could i mean embalmed bodies are weird but yeah i feel like i would be able to tell that there was a structure under the skin like that it had bones and shit right (laughs) i mean weirdest thing and they were just like because what was happening was Lucy and Melody, who I presume are fairly, like, small, like, they are not described as, like, beefy women, are hauling this full-size Well, dummy. Ace was in it, too. Yeah. Ace was also involved <laughs> but in But, I mean, this. like, y'all, when, they, when I say that they were whipping this body around, like, yes. it, it was like Wonder Woman in that stupid Batman versus Superman. Like, she's just flinging a thing around. Like, that body was just... Like an eraser, just being tossed. And the off reason of the it was in the closet is because they fucked up the timing, and they left it in a closet. Because of course you kind of had to leave it in the house somewhere. But you would think you wouldn't leave it in her closet. I, I guess that's why they locked the door. Like so, okay. Oh, they locked the door. Oh, okay. When Stephanie <gasps> hears that she basically lives in a town of insane people, she's like, <laughs> "I gotta go for a minute." So she just like she yeah. she she makes the fourteen hour drive, and that's the one thing that people don't realize. This is what people don't realize about fucking Maine and how weird Maine is is like it takes it takes eight hours to get from upstate New York which is three hours from Canada to to Maine 
Maine. Yeah, it's all the way up so there. So it's like she drives the 12, 13 hours to get from Maine to like back to Jersey City. And like and when she gets to Jersey City, which is a shithole, she's like, wow, this is a shithole. And she basically just turns around and goes. But, you know, she needed that 26 hours of the car to like regroup. Well, that's where I do my best thinking. Yeah. So and, I actually, I, I do get that. <laughs> and prior to this, Ivan had asked her to marry him. And, you know, she had been kind of taken aback, um, but was like, give me some, give me, give me a minute to think on it, you know. And, you know, she comes back and he's cooking and she's like, is it just you? And he's like, yeah, Melody and Lucy didn't think, you know, they were like waiting to see if you'd want them back. And it, it has a very happy ending, you know, they're like. She's like, oh. and she's not pregnant. No. You know, like these yeah. early, like these these '80s series romances, they are so often yeah. pregnant in that, like that later, like kind of denouement. But no, she is not pregnant. No. Um. <laughs> so you know, I guess it's that the whole town cared so much about Ivan. What? We gotta move, baby. Oh my god, it's insane. So, but yeah, they. they and then at the very end, there's, they leave the door open for there to have maybe always been a ghost. Yes, that they hear like they're 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 knocking boots in the bedroom, um, and they had always like the thing had been that the ghost Aunt Tess, who was the the ghost wife of Ivan's, you know, pirate great 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 grandfather. You know, she didn't like anybody else being in the master bedroom, so they're in the master bedroom, and she hears like foot. They hear footsteps, and like the other thing is, they're like, we don't know how your toilet got cracked. You know, <laughs> like what? So the, the was the ghost taking? I'm saying like no it's, ghostly shit. Probably what happened is they threw that dummy onto the fucking toilet. And <laughs> probably they broke. The- I doubt it's Tess. I mean, like, Jesus. Um, I'm sure she was like a like you know a, a historical woman. She's like five foot two. How I, thick can her it ghost was be? Bananas. So that is like a very insane. Again, the, the okay. What happened? Like this book. This is a Courtney Jam because y'all know I love a caper. I love a caper, and like this is a, what I felt like. It's finally the book that I've wanted, and I didn't think it would be this one. You know, I thought it would be so, like one of these other ones. Like, you know, we've done all these other like, you know, he's a spy, blah 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 blah. Like this kind of nonsense caper is my favorite thing. That's what I want. But like the fact that this whole town, this whole town of shoemakers, this whole town of fucking shoemakers, <laughs> yes. um, <laughs> like, was behind this massive gaslighting of this poor woman who is traumatized from having a gun held to her head. Like she's my like she is Miami Vice. Like she straight up got viced and then thrown into the fucking like Hudson River. So now <laughs> she's got webbed feet right <laughs> she's got webbed feet you know she doesn't have a, a crocket or a tubs to like pull her out or edward james almost like you know she doesn't have any of that um or a johnny Depp there was a point Draco. okay when when that body fell out of the closet I, like I, very rare for this kind of book i have to say i've never read a love swept or a, any kind of very short series romance where in my mind i was like you know what i don't know what's gonna happen to this fucking book this was, th- this book had so many scooby-doo ghost fake outs like we had okay we had we had we had you know because she kept saying Every time she fell down a thing, whether she fell into the uh, whether she fell into the ocean or she fell down a hill, she said somebody pushed her. And so, you know, we had mysterious pushing. Then we had on the schooner, we had schooner ghosts that ended up being Melody, like ghost fake out. Ghost fake yeah, out. Yeah, but except somebody on the schooner was like, yeah, I wonder how you did that like crazy projection thing with that old lady, you know, like a... Uh... So there, there was already like a yes. maybe that was the ghost. So like, you know? there's like okay, so we have like ghost fake out number one. Then we have in the fucking house ghost fake out number two. Melody is doing a, a dual ghost fake out because we have her saying that she talks to Tess all the time and her swinging that dead body around. There's so <laughs> many ghost fake outs. Like g g g Like what is happening? I don't know. This book was bananas, and I can't wait for questions. Why would you want to live with anybody who would ever do any of these things? <laughs> because I, you know what? It lets me know that this town, if I am considered accepted in this weird fucking main town that is like obviously the town from Needful Things, yeah. <laughs> that they're going to like ride or die me. That, That's true. That you when know, you're in, you're in. You're fucking in. Um, oh, you know what we didn't talk about? I forgot. Okay, so uh, it said, like, when Courtney read the thing in the beginning, 
that uh, a few things have been updated, like like big old like dumb mistakes that she made. No, that wasn't what was updated. Or I mean, maybe it was. I don't know. I didn't compare I don't know, the text. Yeah. They yes. sprinkled in extraordinarily two. sparingly. Two yeah. weird updated references. One, like when he first yeah. meets her, she like when she comes flailing down the hill, like ass over elbows down that hill, she's got on a SpongeBob SquarePants t-shirt. And I want to know what the original cartoon t-shirt she had on was. Yeah, because we were thinking maybe Scooby-Doo, because wouldn't that be appropriate? Because g- but g- then g- g- Scooby-Doo g-goals. was still, <laughs> but that was still like a perfectly, Everybody you know, cromulent reference. And then, yeah, everybody knows who Scooby-Doo is. And then the other one was Melody talking about, like, one of the, like, ghost hunters um, who Melody just hates. Melody thinks they're boring. Um, was asking, they were like, oh, what do you talk to the ghost about? What do you talk to Tess about? She's like, Eminem. He, he mm-hmm. loves the, he loves she loves Eminem and the woman's like you mean Eminem's the candy she's like no the rapper and I was like this is a very weird reference so like why why just those things why those are the only two like yeah and I know they did. I mean like remember when we read the witching hour and yeah. we, we we heard that they had updated it and that it was about the, like the wi-fi and shit yeah or like every key like, <laughs> don't do weird, that y'all yeah. Don't do that. It only makes the rest of it weird because if the whole book was not written in this time period, yes. it, it's not going to make any sense if you just toss in Eminem, y'all. It was so weird. Weird. Go- maybe it was a g- g- ghost. G- g- maybe, g- it was- g- ghost. maybe it was supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that we we gave you that to chew on, how about question time? Well, you know what? Before questions. I have to. I have to say. This. Never mind. Not question time. No. Back question time up. I realized because again, I've been Courtney no fun, so Courtney's having a little bit of fun, and she's been very talky. And you know what? I haven't really given you your schooner moment, and I don't know. No. I don't. No. I don't no. know if we have no. a schooner moment built into the questions, and like we don't. But I sat on that schooner moment. I decided. That the world does not need my scooter. No, we're, we've all been waiting for it. Like we're all. Waiting. Well, there was not much. In, like there, honestly, there wasn't much in the book about the actual operations of the scooter. Well, like, well, who was? The... I have certainly flopped in and out of a yawl before. Well, who and was? That, it's very floppity. But all we know is that it's Ivan and Ace. Like we don't really know much about the other crew. Like who's running the fucking scooter? It's not the. Yeah, it does definitely require more than just two people and a cook. I mean, even on the ship that I, on the trip that I took, where we were all there actually as like hands on the boat, um, I don't remember how many people were on it, but like it was a good like another like six or eight crew people. Yeah, <laughs> and of course they were always watching us because we were fuckwits, some of us more than others. <laughs> oh my god, I can't remember her name, but there was this woman. Jesus Christ! Uh-huh. Oh, I tried so hard to be kind to her, and then like now I'm like, wait, why was I doing that emotional fucking labor? Everybody hated her for a reason. <laughs> but yeah so it, it requires a lot more than two people to drive a traditionally rigged schooner yes um it does <laughs> somebody is always on each of those sails it is a, a constant absolutely constant thing and it's really like if you're into any kind of history that has age of sail stuff in it i highly recommend going on one just so that you get an idea of incredibly how incredibly laborious getting things from one end of the world to the other used to be because you can read like all all the um, all the Horatio Hornblower and you know Aubrey Maturin books you want to, it doesn't actually like provide you the hands-on experience of every time we go across the wind, we have to pull on like ten fucking ropes, and then we have to coil them back again, and then two minutes later we do exactly the same thing over again. <laughs> I do have. It is exhausting. I have sort of a boat. Hold on, sort of, it's sort of a boat story. Not story. So I used to work for. Um... North Carolina historic sites and North Carolina is obviously different than South Carolina because they have like South Carolina, like parcels in their few state owned historic sites with, um, I think parks, like with parks yeah. and recreation, mm-hmm. parks and recreation, in North Carolina, where I worked for, you know, God, like over 10 years before, I, you know, my new life in Columbia, um, North Carolina has state historic sites, which are like the, like the state historic sites and then other things. Like it's changed a little bit now. I think it's all now under parks, but they have a division of cultural resources. And one of the things that they used to have 
um, or they still have, if you go to the Outer Banks, they have on in Roanoke Island Festival Park, which is a historic site in Manio, they have the Elizabeth II. And it is a old, <laughs> tall ship that they'll take out. Like, it's a reconstruction of one. Um, and they take it out and sail it you know, occasionally. And going into that thing is bleak because I'm like, Jesus Christ, there's no way. There is no way because you can't really understand how small they are until you're in yes. them. Um, and I mean, obviously this one's a little bit older <laughs> than the schooner that this guy's in, but yeah. Well, I, w- I was in one very similar to that schooner and I paid extra for a single and a single was like a fucking coffin God, <laughs> along, you know, yeah. you're picturing the bow of the ship. And so it, just like in, in this boat, the, um, the, uh, the, the eating area, like the dining room and the galley were there at the bow of the ship. So you have, it's like the shape of the bow mm. and like kind of built into that are, are two single cabins. Um, you could stand up, um, in the part of it that was closest to the door, but under your bunk was, um, was like, uh, was the ship's, um, like deck. Yeah. Like, so, like, you had, a, like, maybe two feet above your head um, was decking. And so in the morning, when people got up, I mean, we all got up at the butt crack of dawn. But if you didn't, <laughs> you would be anyway. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. Like, because, yeah. This... Yeah. So, yeah. You got up before dawn, and you worked until after dark. And which, in the summer, you know, was, it was, like, Maine is high up there. So let's say it's a 16-hour day. Yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, it's, uh, you go back to bed in this tiny little cabin and this is absolute luxury as compared to what the crew, you know, was living in yeah. and what the crew would have obviously been living in. And if this were, you know, a, a cargo schooner, mm. this is terrible. This is an absolutely <laughs> awful way to live. Well, look, what, <laughs> it's fascinating. But... What killed me about this boat? Like, and I was like, Stephanie, I get you. You did some research, but also you didn't research old people because old no. people are not going to be on this boat just looking at leaves they're gonna they, what those old people are gonna do is they're gonna take the the day cruise like the two hour go look at some leaves cruise where there's like deck chairs and drinks and you get like <laughs> if it's smooth enough they're gonna take the pontoon tour that you take on lake placid they're not gonna be on a week-long schooner excursion uh yeah well like they they would they would have like trips like that for i mean not like old old people well, not like they... people who are on for the cruise cruise they would be on people who were like you know in their a healthy 60s like the people in the in- insure ads right and who would they would do like a, they had like a, a a folk music festival one and they had like a, a leaf peeping one or but like where they would have like a famous photographer come and teach you how to like use that giant fucking camera your dad always buys <laughs> you <laughs> well, know so like... they did do that but they they also had a shower the way that she wrote those old people, those old people were like luxury old people. So no, they absolutely were. And the, one of the big selling points of schooner that I want on is the food. Oh my gosh! Because <laughs> this lady would do this this wood stove all all day, and you know, and she would bake the pies either in the morning or in the night. But there was it was delicious and plentiful and amazing, and nothing looked back at me from it. Yeah. Like those people all wanted their money back. Like he went under that season mm-hmm. because those people demanded money that he had already spent. <laughs> yes. So, okay. You can intersperse your other schooner stories as we do our questions, but I wanted to, I'm, get... I'm done now. I think no, I, I'm, I'm going to try. Know, no, I I've, like... been, I've been very good. No, I, I feel like I, I know that I have been, you know, the, the talky one with my, you know, gaslighting <laughs> weekend at Bernie's. I wanted to, I wanted to give you your schooner moment. I wanted to give you your your schooner fare. Ah, It's my my father-in-law's favorite band is schooner fare. Can I tell you how how, how, how miffed it is possible to be when the world gets into sea shanties for a minute? And I'm like, bitch, you know how long... (laughs) No, no, it's fine. It's fine. My, it's fine. My, again, my father-in-law, honor, like, his favorite band of all time is Schooner Fair. Um, <laughs> he loves Schooner Fair, and he loves he loves tugboats. His his father was a tugboat <laughs> operator, and, um, again, like, Troy is right next to, the town of Troy is right next to Albany, and, like, he worked on, the, like, the Troy tugboats, and my father-in-law has done the, like, the elite tugboat tours and stuff like <laughs> it's so <laughs> i did i did think it was very interesting so the crew on this boat that i went on like there was the captain and he also owned it and and the the chef and um 
Oh, I wasn't, was the captain's wife on board? She might have been. But um, also, everybody else was like kids. And I mean, like, I was 25. So the fact that I thought they were kids yeah. and then they were really young. So I was talking to this girl. I don't remember her name, but I can remember her face like it was yesterday. And um, so she was saying that she was kind of putting hours in on the ship because she was at the, I don't know if it's like the main maritime university, but like the big maritime school that's in Maine. Yeah. And I was like, oh, because of course I'm like, I'm, I'm enthralled with the, the romance of this ship, even after having worked several 16 fucking hour days in the sunshine and I had like the worst sunburn from fog don't ever get a a fog sunburn um and i was like so is this what you want to do and she says and she looks at me like i'm crazy and she says no this is way way too dangerous like she wanted to be um a a tugboat captain or a container ships you know she's like i would never do this this is far far too perilous oh oh gosh i hadn't thought about it there's a there's a town and um there's a town just outside of of Troy, like going up, God, forget we're deep diving. So if you go up, like, like, okay, so my hus- my husband's family grew up in just outside of Albany, and Albany is right on, obviously the Hudson River. And if you go up, you go up maybe about ten miles, not even. You get to Water Valette, and Water Valette is where basically the Erie Canal like lets out, like you know, um, it has one of the like the outlets, and so. <laughs> I have been to this place many times because I'm obsessed with canals and I love canals. But they also have in Water Roulette, they have like a tugboat festival. <laughs> and so, like, again, my father-in-law, because his father worked on the tugboats, like the tugboat festival is very near and dear to his heart. But what is wild, I will say, so like when you go to the, when you go to the Erie Canal, um, like they have obviously like the modern, like you can watch the locks you know like and it's really cool to see and it's really small but what's even wilder mm-hmm. is next to it they have the old locks like where the donkey used to have to like pull shit and it's bananas it is absolutely bananas and like you would get such you would get such a little lady like naval hard on <laughs> like it would be a sarah jam to go Sh- to- shall i sing shall i sing <laughs> like you sing so- you can, you can on the eerie that's not a sea shanty, though. Oh. It's a canal shanty, I guess. <laughs> he can sing the um, schooner fair, so you can sing. Um, <laughs> then my father-in-law can go and watch schooner fair together. All right, so questions. Now that I have, now that we've talked boats a little bit. So, big dick energy or big dick energy? Oh, he was he was nice. He was very sweet. I felt he was. He was very, like, a, like he's a very Janet Ivanovich, like, you know, he's laughing at you because Not, you, you did something really fucking stupid. See, okay, <laughs> you know? in a lot of her romance novels, he is much, much kinder than most of her heroes. Most of her heroes are, like, like I said, they're very Korean drama guys. Like, they're kind of assholes. And he was very, very sweet. Like, he is, like, I will give you a couple of her, like, I keep saying, like, but he is the most kind or one of the most kind that she has had. I felt like he's our first strawberry blonde. And I feel like from his description, he had big Peter Horton from 30 something energy. Um, <laughs> like, you know, he had the curly hair with a little bit of beard. And she talks about like how his beard should be criminal because of what it can do. Um, well, and then like he shaves it off at the end, which I found very upsetting. Yeah. I like, I saw him. But in the in the original cover, okay. So if you played Red Dead Red Dead, Red, Dead, no. Red Dead Redemption Two, and you did not get put off by the controls in the first hour, you played a lot of Red Dead Redemption Two, and you spent a lot of time with Arthur Morgan. And male or female, hetero or homo, you want to bang Arthur Morgan. <laughs> so I I appreciate that that cover tried to make that happen for See, me. See, and and for all you like TV dorks like me, he's Peter Horton from Thirty Something. AKA he's the older guy that C. Thomas Howell hangs out with in the movie Side Out. So <laughs> he was fine. Well, and what I thought was interesting about this book, because like I have not, we've, I have not read a lot of, we've like, read one love swept mm-hmm. other than this. Um, and I appreciate how frank it was that uh, it was like 30 pages in and both of them had admitted like, yeah, I want to fuck you. Yeah. 
And it's very, yeah. yeah. And you know, like, well, like now there's being coy. Now there's been like, oh, 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 sir. And like, no, they're like, yeah, I want to get up on that. I mean, like, I don't know if I'm going to get up on that because I got problems and, and I'm not sure if it's the yeah. right thing for me to do at this time. But like, they, it's they very their adult, conflicts were. It's very adult yeah. conversation. Um, and we'll, yeah, we'll talk more about that when we get to our like consent question. But well, then, well, first, then, what did you talk shit with or about the heroine? She's great. And I mean, Janet yeah. Ivanovich makes really likable heroines. Like, and they're plucky. They're like, what I liked about her, and I mean, you know, jump it. Like, what I liked a lot about her is that she was a police officer. Like, there's a part in the book where he gets too close to her when she's kind of spooked, and basically she like knees him in the groin. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, she's like, bitch, you got too close. Like, um, she's very competent in spite of her incompetency. Like she, I think she's supposed to be somebody that we can all identify with because we all have those things that we're not great at. And she just takes it on the chin, like the cooking, like she doesn't ever cower or say, Oh, I'm so bad at this. Blah, 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 blah. Like, she's just like, well, fuck it. You know? Like, okay. All right. Well, they're going to eat apples for a snack. It's healthy. It's good for you. Yeah. 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 I also like that her, um, the, the, her, her moment undercover um was not like an overblown like big movie thing you know it wasn't like and then she got shot six times and they had to take like you know and they they, they rebuilt her femur and all this stuff it's just that you know nobody got hurt yeah she just got but something could have gone real bad i mean like it's the kind of thing that that, that is like more, much more realistic yeah. i think than like a giant shootout like you know the guy who was with her um like that threw her into the hudson river to, to keep her safe yeah nobody died but it was scary yeah and like yeah. she, you know, she knows what she like. She knows she doesn't know what she wants, but she knows that she doesn't know what she wants, and that she's figuring. Like, there's no hemming and hawing about things. She's very forthright with him. You know, it's not a no. And she no, doesn't no. stick to yeah. Like she okay. She she had decided that she didn't want to have sex before marriage, and she meets him. And then she's like, okay, well, maybe that was wrong. Maybe I, you know, yeah. uh, she's open to like changing her mind. And it's great. I mean, it's great. She feels very much like somebody that you would be legitimately friends with. Like, that mm-hmm. she is kind of the the reflection of what the modern, especially this time period, like, woman is. Like, to be like, okay, maybe, like, you know, people have put this, like, notion of, you know, wait till marriage. And, like, maybe it's just wait until somebody that I want to do this with. You know, like, it's, she's really, she's great. And she's really funny. And, yeah, I liked her a lot. Yeah, I mean, she's really always on the back foot in this because it's always his, like, in the beginning, it's his ship. And then yeah. it's technically her house, but it's really, it's been his house his yeah. whole life. So she's always the outsider, but she still, she she holds around. And he never, like, makes her feel that, you know? Like, aside from, like, maybe lying about a shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he might have lied about a shower. You know, I like, know. I feel like they're, he's very, they're very both sensitive to each other. Um I don't know, like, as a, I think it might be one of our more healthy relationships that we've had. In these Definitely. Days. Okay. Yeah, it's very equal, even though their actual positions are not equal ever in the book. Like, it's very emotionally equal. It's good. I will say, like, the one, the one part that did crack me up was like when, when the buff when <laughs> that insane like Wilbur esque <laughs> like mannequin slash dead body came flying through, came flying through. Like, she's freaked out. Obviously, yeah, I get it. But she's also a cop, and he's like, stay here. I'm going to go look. I was like, she's a control freak <laughs> narcotics cop. She is not going to let that man just, like, you know, tell her what to do. But, no. <laughs> but I mean, again, for a love sweat and for a book that's relatively, like, it is it is a 244-page book. A lot happens. So Yes. So much happens. <laughs> All right. So this, this one's going to be an interesting one. Back tell the bitch. Well, hard to fucking say when all your friends are fucking lying to you and planting funeral home dummies and pretending to be a ghost on you. I mean, but at the same time, she's got two. In spite of the gaslighting and ghouls, she's got two real ones. Like it's not even just one. Like she's got two other females living in the house with her, and females that like are very different from her i found it really interesting like the female relationships in those because oh yeah this was that was great but courtney if you ever design a caper that involves me thinking that there's a corpse in my closet you would love me 
you would be later so like afterwards <laughs> after, not not when it was happening after you took the 26 hour drive to jersey city <laughs> to clear your when you went to the picturesque jersey city to clear your head you'd be like damn courtney did a thing <laughs> so yeah it would be amazing um i <laughs> Everybody, like, here's the thing about an Ivanovich book. Everybody is dialed up to 11. Yeah. So it's always like, like, we can joke about this, this really insane situation, you know. But, like, also, I think what's interesting is that, you know, Lucy is her own character. I felt like at the end she brought, she mentioned, like, oh, you know, at the very end of the book, Stephanie says, oh, I've got two bachelors coming up for Lucy and Melody. And I was kind of like, well, shit, I hope they get their own books because they're, like, really fun. They are. They are, yeah. And I don't know. Lucy doesn't get a lot of screen time, but Melody sure does. And it was it was kind of nice to see in this book the main conversation happening. I mean, obviously you have Ivan and, and Stephanie, but the other main conversations happening are between women. So you have you have... Stephanie talking to obviously Melody. She's talking to Lucy, but the the guests are the the mouthpiece for the guests are women. Yeah, I mean, which is different because you know love swaps are are quite short, and so often we do have to create encores when we do these series romances. Yeah. They don't often have a lot of room, and of course, the last one that we did, Jenny Lynn's Butterfly Swords, had the same thing. Had a ton of women crammed into two hundred and something pages. Yeah. So it can be done. And it felt very natural. And it was very like, I, you know, Ivanovich taken like the improv classes. Like I really like dialogue driven books. Like I, that's just for me, my personal preference. I like these kind of books, but versus like people like thinking what they're thinking and telling me what they're thinking. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, well the thorn birds, you were going to not. Well, <laughs> have, the thorn birds is all people thinking. Yeah, I have other. read it. Like, but, um, I don't know, like, I, I, I didn't, and I enjoyed that Melody doesn't look like you're, even if it was a ruse, like, that she's basically, like, punk rock girl. Mm-hmm. You know, like, she's different looking, and she's different thinking, and, you know, I thought that was kind of cool. If, if you enjoy early Stephanie Plum, you will definitely like this. It has very much the same vibe. It's, it's, it's funny, although, like, there's actually some serious parts in early mm-hmm. Stephanie Plum that they feel a little... Well, not out of place. They're really effective. This is the very frightening uh, kind of rapist boxer in them. But um, yeah, without that, if you took out the rapist boxer, <laughs> the rest of it, them like all running around and like grandma Mazer going to funerals and stuff. Yeah, that's this is if you like that and you're like, wow, why doesn't she write like that anymore? I think go read this one because you will like it. Cool. Um, so when it comes to consent, is this book more Robin Thicke or Marvin Gaye? Well, I mean, you you had some like i mean i'm gonna let you go again i've been talking a lot well, so i don't know i think it was really interesting because yeah when he when she said stop he stopped but then it was actually kind of that realistic thing where you say stop but you still grab a handful of that and you, you, you know you should probably not be grabbing a handful of that like it, it was like kind of messy i mean like he never does anything to her but that she is not completely he into even, but, um, like he's like i don't want to take something like there's a part where it's like he's like this is very special. I mean, he he over special like it's the over specialization of virgin virginity, but that's more of a a twenty twenty one like or twenty first century construct. But like you know, he's like this is special, so I want to make it special. And like he doesn't, he becomes very like I don't want to just take this from you, you know. Um, and he is right; the walls are extremely thin on this. Yeah, <laughs> and like yeah, and I don't like it. it becomes like i said what i what i enjoyed about that this book was the two times that he got handsy at you always read in books where somebody has seen something horrible or something horrible has happened to them and they're like make it go away by fucking and i'm like this is mm-hmm. a really unhealthy thing and <laughs> the times that like she sees again <laughs> she sees weekend at bernie's body flying around he's like hey let's get on it she's like motherfucker there is a body flying around i am not into this at the moment like we had to resolve the body issue before. but like i felt like it was i've re- again some of the ones that i've read by her like they're they're pretty problematic 
and a little bit upsetting. Um, this one was really sweet and really just nice and like yeah, this is just like a confection. Yeah, like there's not like we said in our you know our our you know trigger warnings. There's nothing in this to bother anybody, and I think like especially like that she wrote this you know in the late '80s. You're still expecting like some of that problematic stuff, and it's not there. It's like they have actual com. They have so many conversations about the sex they're gonna have. It's nice. To, it, it's nice to see. Yeah. Like they have such yeah. good communication. All right. So like, and, and she talks about it with her other friends, like you know, with a uh, with her. It's Lucy, her cousin. I forget. Her like, cousin. Like, We're a virgin until Bachelor to the Rapture. Like whatever. <laughs> Sorry, that was a <laughs> church that um that my old roommate went. Uh, they they went to meet men at this um at this this church in Atlanta, and it turned out they were all bachelors to the rapture. Oh, no. very disappointing for them. That sounds upsetting. <laughs> I don't even know what that. Yeah, means. I know it sounds terrible. That sounds upsetting. But so I, I just remembered actually that um no this is this is true and and true to fact because I had forgotten that one night on this ship, um I went up to look at the stars, which are amazing in Penobscot Bay and ooh if I didn't run into two of my fellow passengers slash students um locked in a torrid embrace and it was very awkward and I crept back downstairs. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> Should not go all, up on deck at night again. That's all you can do. <laughs> yeah that's all you can what are you gonna pardon? pardon? This, <laughs> Coming through the sea look of the stars. Yeah. <laughs> Might have seen a moon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, how badly are you judging your mom off reading this book? None at all. Mm-hmm. This is this is a just a funny like my mom and I both read like we read the Stephanie Plum books together, and this is the same sort of thing. Yeah, it's very sweet. Yeah, like not at all. Yeah, it's a good book. Would Scarlett Johansson be in the movie? Yeah, yeah it's in Maine. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I mean it's to all the white people. So yeah, all the white people. I mean, yeah. That's all you can say. Like, it's one of those main, just white people, so. Okay. You're not leaving the house looking like that. Like, this like this is so Stephanie Ivanovich. <laughs> like, it's just, a like, Stephanie Ivanovich. I love how you keep calling her Stephanie Ivanovich, because oh obviously, God. like, she's got some kind of tie of that name. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Janet Ivanovich, she has one type of heroin, and, like, that's fine. But it's always, like, kind of a, a limmy person, like a limmy girl. You know, she's always, like, gangly, and she's always, like, in tank tops and sweatpants and sort of unkempt, and that's great. Or, like, a giant t-shirt. Yeah. You know? And, you know, her outfits, again, her, <laughs> the most outfit that we get is her, her Sarah McBride nightgown. Um, <laughs> you shut up about my nightgowns. <laughs> They're warm and comforting. Oh, you and from Lanza Salzburg, and I get them on eBay from when somebody's grandma dies. I can't. I, like, I would just want to like set myself on fire and be too. I'm actually more likely to wear them around the house, like because uh, yes. the thing is, we have flannel sheets, and a flannel nightgown will stick to flannel sheets. So oh, I, I, I often how do you like do change the t-shirt. How do you how like just the thought of it? Like again, you know what Courtney sleeps in. We're getting sexy. We're getting sexy, listeners. Is I sleep in a triple X <laughs> navy blue shirt that says Taco Cat spelled backwards is Taco Cat, and it's got a cat in a taco. That's what I sleep in. And it's got holes in it, and I love it, and it's perfectly, like, not hot. I can't imagine sleeping in all this hot shit. Like, well, I like it to be cold in the room and me be toasty. Well, see, I like it to be cold in the room, too. But at the same time, like, I would get, you know, I just can't. I don't like, I don't like things down to my, like, ankles or whatever. Like, I get. Well, see, okay, so my Mima flannel 90s are really loungewear. Um, I wear, like, I'm actually still wearing my jammies from yesterday because that's the kind of day it's been. Yeah. So I'm wearing, um, like, a flannel pajama pants for I don't even know what sport the Tennessee Titans play. I don't even know where I They're got these. They're a football team. Well, that's funny because the ball on it is round. Do they not know what shape a football is? <laughs> you got like- well, anyway, I don't even know where I bought these. Um, and I have a, a shirt that they gave me my first week of college. 
It's our honor code shirt. Oh my god! So um, that's oh my god, twenty years. I bet old. you wear that shit around like I'm better than all you. I still got honor code. No, dude, it's transparent practically. It is it's the best. It is practically in tatters, but um, it is extremely comfortable. But so yeah, like mostly I'll, I'll wear my lines of Salzburg um, flannel nighties around like around the house. But then when it gets cold, I like, time to go to bed. I don't like the flannel on flannel action, so I'll put it on like a t-shirt and and. And, and pajama pants but in the summer i wear those woven cotton um <laughs> bad boys like uh, those mima nightgowns that got the you know like the the, the straps and the ruching because it's um it's really hot in south carolina yeah i don't yeah i can't i can't sleep in these okay so again we get her in a lot of rough like she's her her two outfits are sweatpants with stains on them and then a ruffle nightgown so there's not there's not any good outfits in this no, there's not. He does wear jorts. He does wear jorts. He wears jorts and like, there's a part where she's like, I'm going to undo your pants because you're bold. You know, <laughs> his tight jeans. <laughs> you must be about to hush yourself. <laughs> yeah. And then like, again, I feel like he was very much Peter Horton from 30 something. But. <laughs> yeah. Like it's slim pickings for outfits there. Uh-huh. Uh, where'd your 12 year old self have dog eared any pages? No. Yes, it would have. Okay, so the sex is very, you know, not really described, but my 12-year-old self was, yeah. was desperate for anything she could get. But, I mean, like, basically it's like his hands inched up her nightgown, and then it was like, woo, and then it just j- jump cut. You know, there's a lot of jump Definitely cuts. Definitely one of those books where the foreplay is far sexier yeah. than the actual sex. Yeah, there's a lot of jump cuts. Because the foreplay is pretty hot. It is good foreplay. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll give you that. <laughs> okay. So, what pairs nicely with a dumpster fire? I mean, it has to be, like, what, like, Reuniti or something? I mean, it has to be something very silly and sweet and... I don't know. You got any, like, sc- scooter wine? <laughs> you got a schooner wine? Um, uh, well, I, I did not have the damn sense to bring wine on the schooner, but a, a, a very nice girl brought quite a lot of yellowtail. There you go. <laughs> yellowtail yeah, on you your go. schooner. Well, the thing is, we drank it all that last night on board, and then it was really foggy in the morning. And what you don't want to be is slightly hungover, and it'd be foggy on a boat. I've never been seasick in my life. Oh. I was hanging on to that rail looking at the not horizon for fucking, like, you know. No, this, this all sounds like hell to me. So, like, um, I'll, Well, there was a shower. I'll, well, it's not even that. Like, I just... Uh, uh. I got the first girl, first class upgrade on the way home, um, and so I sat next to people who had paid for it, and I sat there, and I'm sure, I mean, I, I, I had not taken a shower immediately before working a schooner, you know, into the harbor. Why did you decide <laughs> to do this? Like, what what was it about that, like, what made you do this? Like, Oh, I just always love, like, um, you know, sea stories. So, you know, two years before the mast and Horatio Hornblower and all that, and I wanted to know more about a working a working vessel. I wanted to learn how to, like, how to navigate and how to reef and rail and all that. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was one of those things. All right. When you're doing it, I kept thinking like, okay, if I, how would I get back to the mainland if I tried to get off on this fucking island when we stop here? Like, is it possible? Is there like a ferry? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I was like literally trying to figure out how the fuck to go home because it was such hard work and uh, it required a lot of social acumen of me, which you know I don't possess. <laughs> so it was like a social nightmare for me. Like, and then like, okay. So like the day, like, then we docked and then I was like really proud of myself for having done a thing. And then like three hours after having gotten off that skewer, you're like, Oh, that was the best thing in the world. You should do it. <laughs> so it's one of those things. No, I get that. I get that where you do the, the, yeah, the awful thing and it's awful, but yeah. And then you, you go through that mental transformation and then you, you, you think that everybody should do the thing. Yeah. I don't want to be on the boat. All right. So, this has been uh, Janet Ivanovich. I'm going to say your name right, finally. Love Overboard <laughs> slash um, Ivan Takes a Wife. If you enjoyed this, like, y'all, one of the big things that helps us is to leave a nice review on wherever you listen to podcasts. I mean, it doesn't have to be nice, but, you know, sometimes we want nice because we get shouted out a lot on YouTube. Um, you can also follow us on, on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at Bodice Tipplers. You can follow us on Twitter, Bodice Tipplers instagram be tipplers be tipplers you can follow us on instagram um and then our patreon which i can never remember sarah will remember 
patreon.com slash bodice tipplers you can join our patreon for as little as one dollar a month and you'll get some really cool swag and be entered into giveaways and all kinds of stuff so yeah we just put up a thing about um how evidently i was incorrect about what a body shot is yeah and we'll, i'm yeah. sure we'll take our like this one this one took a little bit to get going and maybe we'll take our fuck ups from it and put it on there but also <laughs> we do like we have rona read-alongs where we do like you know group chats and you know stuff like that so again a fuck a month and you get really cool stickers and stuff so keep listening i guess we need we need to go sign it we just be like and bang it out i don't know we need to sign off like, yeah <laughs> if you would like to tell us the sign off like something to make us sound <laughs> clever and fun i don't know Bodice Tipplers is part of the Frolic Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast.